I don't know. Um, I mean, is that based on like the division of wealth and issues pertaining to that? I often think that it tends to towards economic background and um, intersects obviously with race and you know various other things sexism often. In the academic context it would be the control of, of knowledge and information. The Oxford English Dictionary defines classism as the prejudice towards people belonging to a particular social class. Like other forms of discrimination it is split into personal and institutional classism. Personal classism encompasses discriminatory attitudes and actions between individuals. Institutional classism refers to an imbalance in the value given to different social classes. This is often embodied in processes and practices which benefit solely middle and upper class individuals and groups. These have been criticised for perpetuating a cycle of poverty, granting privileges to the already privileged and denying the same to those of less means. But what does this mean in the context of university? Higher education, especially at Russian Group universities, isn't a privilege accessible to everyone. It was designed to be a pathway to socio-economic mobility, based only on academic achievement. However, evidence has found that the story of educational mobility is not that simple. Generally, the children from the most educated bracket of society become the most educated in the following generation. Children of the least educated bracket largely remain there, just 7% of them being educated at the same level as the top bracket. We spoke to some members of the UCL to hear their opinions on why UCL may not be accessible to working class students. There might be a stigma around maybe access to funding, especially in London. It's like, okay, like, I can't afford to go to a uni like that in a city. But I think that the fact that it's London, more than it being the university, would be a factor for yeah. me, at least. So UCL being in London is much more difficult, and especially if you're a student from abroad. I think the biggest barrier is cost. Um, not just of living in London, although that, that plays a huge role, um, but also the cost of actually studying here at UCL. I feel like the low socioeconomic background bracket is quite broad and the scholarships offered by UCL target like the lower end of that spectrum and so there's sort of a gap between that and I suppose like middle class. I mean I guess cost of living and cost of you know anything associated with living. Um, I mean we've got great library resources so I don't think there'd be that problem um, but it might be more kind of felt on a social all the money involved in uh, spending um, in pressures and going out. I also think there is a kind of um, social barrier as well. So there's two dimensions, I think, of some of the challenges that um, um, face people arriving at university, let's say if they're the first in their family to go to university or if they're coming from um, neighbourhoods and difficult financial backgrounds um, that make going to university less common. Um, one aspect is the financial strain and there is uh, some research on looking at how just having to deal with making ends meet while you're a student, how that distracts from your studies, how it kind of also introduces a kind of a cognitive load so that you can't concentrate concentrate as much, worrying about whether um, your student loan payments are going to come through and also then worrying about the long term in terms of how much debt you're accruing. The other side of it is a more social side, so that's more of a sense of fit, right? So if you get the sense when you arrive in an environment that this isn't your kind of place um, or that um, you don't really recognize anyone here uh, in terms of the way people talk, the kind of values people have, and um, that that can also affect sense of belonging and we know that sense of belonging at university is also important for reducing reducing dropout and also for academic performance. Basically universities are set up as middle class environments and they kind of embody middle class values in particular when it comes to an independent sense of self. Working class um, communities generally have more collectivist or interdependent values and so getting that kind of messaging is quite alienating and what they did in this work and this is the work of um, Nicole Stevens and others is that they tried changing the messaging from universities to make it more clearly focused on the community aspects or the kind of collective in and interdependent aspects of being at university and what you can do coming from university and that uh in their study they found that it wiped out the difference in, in GPA and grade point average performance between the students from working class versus middle class backgrounds. What, it, what I really like about that research is it points the, the lens squarely on the institution and not necessarily on the student uh, in terms of here are the ways you need to cope and the way you need to change your mindset to come to university. Uh, it sheds light on the fact that the university itself is embodying a particular set of values and a particular set of assumptions that if, if we're willing to change them I think we could do a lot to address some of the 
inequalities that can come out in terms of outcomes and in terms of time taken to graduate or likelihood to drop out. UCL already provide a range of outreach programmes and some financial support to students of lower socioeconomic backgrounds. But what more can be done to improve the situation? I think just raising awareness and having open and frank discussions with incoming students, with applicants even, or you know, with doing outreach and, and running programmes as, as we do with, with schools. Maybe have more like counsellors and people um, helping um, not only students but people who are considering um, applying. Maybe improving or expanding on the outreach programmes. I know they do like summer schools for students from those backgrounds. Um, so maybe running those more frequently so that they can accept a wider range of students or more students. Perhaps the biggest thing they could do is do more to support students when it comes to cost but also when it comes to their health and well-being. You do need some support along the way. You, it, while it is down to you at the end of the day, you still need the tools and you can't just will the tools out of thin air. I'm Jacob Lawless, um, I'm the president and founder of UCL First Gen. We're there to support students, the first generation and their family to go to university. We provide pastoral support, fortnightly catch-ups, we do events around personal development. There's a need for UCL First Gen because I think students from backgrounds like ourselves often feel lost when they get to university. It's difficult to, on your own accord to identify people from similar backgrounds because you're in the minority, right? I think that's why it's important to provide students with the opportunity to meet people that are like themselves. It helps you feel more comfortable. I also think that students of the lower socioeconomic backgrounds, they're really placed in a difficult position because they may not have been to schools where you get the support when it comes to academic writing or public speaking. Students from the sorts of backgrounds as well may not really know much about career options when it comes to leaving university. Uh, so when it comes to preparing for things like applying for internships in your second year of university or applying to graduate schemes, a lot of students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds don't really realise the options they have until it's too late. I think that can be quite damaging to their prospects and opportunities. I think there's also a lot to be learned in terms of um, helping students out financially and always uh, creating a kind of a safety net whether somebody isn't getting, whether there's any kind of a delay in payments coming through, whether from student loans or other sources of funding, and um, to always provide financial aid so that students have that buffer and are able to continue their studies. Um, I think not creating uh, unrealistic expectations around extracurricular time and extracurricular activities that might cost a lot of money. Um, but what the universities who have really put investment into student experience have done is they've tried to equalize the student experience as much as possible. But then for this issue of social fit, one thing that's worked well is when more and more students live on campus and when whether people are receiving financial aid or scholarships to be on campus isn't an overt thing, it isn't um, something that's open, um, everybody's going to the same dining halls and there's a lot of funding for the same social events so that these kind of socioeconomic differences just aren't salient among students and you, you really kind of feel like an equal to the other students as a result. But that requires the university actually putting money into the student experience and thinking about these things as it designs them. The, the university does some work and it does some great work, but it can't do everything on its own and it can't do everything on its own accord because it's an institution and often people look at institutions as they are, not people. I feel there's a lot of work to be done and, you know, it takes people to really make an effort to go out there and try and make that difference. It's not going to happen on its own.